Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. If you are new to our channel, subscribe, drop this video a like and get involved in the comment section down below. So we are fast approaching 9,000 subscribers, which is an absolutely huge number. Blows my mind that we're reaching those numbers. Um, like I said in the last episode, we had our best month in August. We had over 143,000 views, which is insane. So if you can subscribe to the channel, it's absolutely free. Um, all of our content is free. And, you know, if you do enjoy it, you do watch us, you do dip in and out of it and you return and you're not subscribed, just hit subscribe um, and we can get to 9,000. And my aim from the very start has been to get this channel to 10K, which that was just my little goal that I wanted to set myself. So if we can get there fast, it would highly be appreciated. So all you got to do is just click that button. It's free uh, and it'll mean the world to me. So Leicester City v Aston Villa up next. A game that two managers that are under pressure. Steven Gerrard still massively, massively under pressure. And Brendan Rodgers is in a, in a dire run of form, isn't it? Five losses in a row. Upstep Aston Villa where we've got a decent record against them away in the last two games. Um, we've got a, I think we've got a win and a draw, so um, that's pretty decent. So, yeah, Gerard still under pressure, but the pressure eased on Saturday night because it was a really good performance, and like we said in the pre, in the reaction, sorry, and and every Villa fan was really pleased with the performance. We were pleased with the shape of the team, the bravery, the commitment, the desire. More importantly for me, I was really impressed with the shape of the team. Out of possession, it was drifting from left to right, still in the position and the, and having that tactical nous about us, implementing a game plan, setting sort of traps when we could sort of break free. Uh, we countered really well. It was nice to see us countering well as well, which we haven't really done so far this season. So for me, it was just a really good performance. I felt like Gerald got his tactics right. I felt like the team bought into what Gerard was trying to tell them to do in that game, which was really important. And it's what we've not seen this season. And it's why that little glimmer, the little glimmer of that team, and what we saw on Saturday is what we now need to take into the rest of the games, right? And it's got to start against Leicester. We have to have the same application, the same desire, the same plan. Be brave on the ball, believe in ourselves, be a good teammate to each other. And that is how I feel like we can get something from this game. It's important that we build on the performance of Saturday. Saturday means nothing. Getting a point against one of the best teams in the world means absolutely nothing if we can't back it up and build. We need to get some momentum now. We need to get some consistency. And we need a run of games now. Leicester, Southampton before the international break where we are on the end of positive results. I feel like if we can be on the end of positive results going into the international break, that'll put us in good stead. I feel like that would be building blocks for us, building blocks for the team and for the fan base to have a little bit of a breather going into the international break. We can recoup, regroup, and we can sort of go again after the international break. So I think we need to go in little small baby steps, but let's not take two steps backwards. We've got to keep going forward now. Um, and I have seen a little bit of a difference in Gerard. I do think he feels like, you know, you, you normally hear, hear that normal spiel of, yeah, Villa's a big club, but I think he understands what a big club this is. And I think he understands the expectation of this fan base this fan base expects a lot and we want a lot and we want to see our team performing. And if you give the fans a sniff of something, we will back you. We are with you all of the way. And we saw that against Manchester City. We had a sniff, didn't we? And that fan base, them fans in that stadium were right up for it. And it was an amazing atmosphere. So we need to harness that. And these players now need to believe in what Steven Gerrard is telling them to do. Because it, do, it, it can't work with just one saying something. Everybody has to be in it all together. And Gerard said after uh, the West Ham loss um, that he was all in, are his players. Now, I felt like after that Man City game, I felt like them players were all in. So 
I want to see what I've just seen, the same again, right? The same level of performance. We can't dip from that. I thought Young was fantastic. Leon Bailey was brilliant. Ollie Watkins was fantastic. His hold-up play was really good. Dougie Louise, for me, is our best passer in midfield. He was he was really good. Kamara, brilliant. Mings, awesome. So all in all, it was a great team performance. And like I've just said, we've got to take that now into Leicester. And let's just talk about Leicester. We'll preview Leicester now as well. But I'll add my thoughts on, on Leicester at the minute and, and where I feel like they are as a club. I think Brendan Rodgers is, is a brilliant coach. I think he's really good. You know, he's won the FA Cup with Leicester. He got them to, what, top six finishes, top five finishes. You know, they were really good. But it just feels like the money's dried up. And the football squads are a funny thing. You can have an amazing team, but you need new players coming in to push players. You need new faces then Donka and Bednarak coming into that Villa squad will do that squad the world of good. Players like to see new players coming in. So the fact that Leicester have only signed one player, I don't feel like it's great. I was watching them against Brighton and a few things that I wanted to pick up on was the demeanour of some of the players, the, the arguing between themselves. It's a pressure cooker Playing for a Premier League team, it's it's it can be like boiling points sometimes. And I think we're starting to see that with this Leicester side. They're heavily under pressure. They've got a good squad, but they just haven't strengthened enough. They haven't brought in enough new faces. They haven't freshened it up enough. Some key players have left. Fafana's gone, which is, which is a massive, massive loss to them. Um, they did well to keep hold of Madison. But, you know, the, the Leicester fans, that they, they want to see... Growth, don't they? They want to see the club progressing. And I feel like at the minute, their fans are feeling like the club's regressing. Um, and there's a lot of finger pointing going on. I think some of the tactics that they were played against Brighton, it just it just wasn't great, was it? They brought in uh, Daka and Ilanacho. They've dropped Jamie Vardy. And it just feels like that back four just it looks a bit lightweight now. It looks a bit weak. It just looks like it can be got, got at. Kasper Smichael, massive, massive loss. You know, in the tunnel before every game, they were they saw Kasper Smichael and now he's gone. That leader has gone. Um, I feel like he's going to be a massive loss for Leicester as well. And, you know, there's pressure on Brendan Rodgers and there's a lot of fans that want Brendan Rodgers to go. Um, they're sitting bottom of the league. Um, so, yeah, let's just have a little look at some of the stuff that's going on with Leicester at the minute. So their average positions for the loss against Brighton, there's a lot of players there that are in their own half. Um, they played with a holding midfielder, um, a four across midfield and sort of a two sort of up top. But, you know, they were interlinking and one was dropping off. And I think the thing is with Leicester, I think going forward, they've got some really good players. You know, you look at uh, Madison's unreal. Um, in a Nacho, normally always scores against the Villa, doesn't he? You've got Harvey Barnes, who's electric on that left-hand side. So going forward... It's good, but I just feel like going backwards, there's that, I just feel there's that vulnerability in them and I think it really can be got at. Uh, so the player ratings for the last game, and this is what I'm saying about that back four. Going forward, Dakar had a good game, Ilanacho scored, Madison's always involved, um, Sumare was the holding midfielder, Tielemans was decent, he played that brilliant ball to Dakar for his goal. Um, but Thomas, Evans and Didi, they're now playing Ndidi at the back. Um, I'm guessing that their new a new signing will have his visa sorted, so he might make his first appearance in the Premier League. And James Justin, who had an absolute stinker. So this is an area that Villa have got to be targeting. We've got to be stretching this defence. Against Brighton, their attacks predominantly came down the right-hand side, um, through the left and then slightly through the middle. The majority of the game was sort of played in Leicester's own half and uh, in the middle of the park as well. So let's have a look at some of the strengths and weaknesses for Leicester. Uh, their shooting from direct free kicks is very strong with Barnes and Madison. Creating chances using through balls is strong. Um, Madison's probably great at that as well. Their weaknesses are avoiding individual errors, defending counter-attacks, defending against long shots, protecting a lead. That goal from, is it McArthur? And that free kick was absolutely sublime for them long shots. 
for Brighton. Leicester's style of play, take long shots, short passes, play with width, attack down the right, rotate their first 11 and they're non-aggressive. Um, and I just want to show you some of the shots from the game against Brighton. Time and time again, the ball was bypassed through their midfield and it was, it was three on two. And it was just a catalogue of errors through, through the back line for Leicester. Um, so I think there's an area where if we can get Leon Bailey, we can get Ollie Watkins stretching their defence, we can really cause them some problems. Um, the next side, again, a catalogue of errors at the back, a mistake from the keeper. Organ Organisation was just shocking. Um, and the back line just looked all over the show. Um, again, isolating through the left-hand side, Justin um, losing his marker. Justin had a torrid time all game. And one area, a little bit like what we saw against Man City, I feel like that ball over the top into the channels, um, playing in between the lines of the centre-back and the full-backs can be absolutely crucial. Um, so that, that's how I feel like we can get something from this game against Leicester. Um, it is going to be a difficult game because they have got some really good players going forward. But I think if we can keep ourselves structured, tight, compact, play a similar sort of way as if what we did against Man City, I'm sure we'll create chances. We had a really good game against them at the King Power last season. I think Ashley Young played that game as well. And he was really good. So if Cash is out, I know that Ashley Young is going to be bang up for this game as well. I think Bailey's going to have an important role on the counter-attack as well. But, you know, we've got to use this vulnerability of Leicester to our advantage because they've lost five games in a row. If we and them Leicester fans hate Villa. Now, I, I've been to the last few Leicester games um, at the King Power against Villa and, and they absolutely hate us. So if they go 1-0 one, one down against the Villa and the way they're playing, their fans are going to be absolutely fuming. So we really need to use this to our advantage. I think if we can go 1-0 up, I think it will be a real positive result from Villa. Um, and I do actually feel like we can get something from the game. Like I've said a few times, though, it's important that we really build on what we did against Man City. I can't reiterate that enough. Um, it's not going to be good enough if we sort of go one step backwards. We have to get something positive. They're bottom of the league. They're conceding, conceding shot after shot, uh, goal after goal. They lost the last game 5-2. We really have to go there and put the pressure on and put in a real big performance. And I'm sure we will. And I think we can get something from the game. Um, so the Fantasy Football League is up and running. I've got to say, the Up the Villa podcast team, I have tweaked it slightly. Um, I had to tweak it because after a couple of game weeks, um, we weren't doing very well. But um, if I can get it to load on my phone, I'll, I'll tell you what, what the league's looking like. Um, but... Yeah, it's doing really well. I think the podcast team's sitting in about 220th place. So uh, it's all to play for. Um, but yeah, it's just not loading on my phone. It's standard. Um, so yeah, the Premier League table at the minute, you've got Leicester rock bottom on one point. Forest, West Ham in the relegation zone on four points. Villa just above it on four points. The pack's pretty tight, to be fair. Um, Brighton are doing really well in, with, um, in fourth place on 13 points. Um, and I can't believe Man United beat Arsenal. They've really turned it around. And that's another good point that, Ar that United beat Liverpool. And what a turnaround that was in their form. You know, they've gone unbeaten since. So if we can really utilise this this um, this performance against Man City, um, I think it can be really good. So the Up the Villa podcast lead, league, we've got Stop, Drop and Raul. Um, that's Harrison Bowater. He's on 416 points. Uh, Ronan Ward is second on the, exactly the same points. Uh, Simon Lambert is on 413 in third place. Uh, where are we? We are 280th. So there's around 700 people in this group. So that that's I'm taking that. That's pretty decent. So, um, yeah, we're doing well. What is our team? I'll show you what the team is. So I've changed the team. So we've got Edison, Saliba, Digne, Arnold, Gross, Odegaard, Bailey, De Bruyne, Kane, Jesus and Haaland. That is what I've done to the team. So I slightly changed it um, and it's actually doing really well at the minute. So, yeah, it's getting around 50 odd points each week. So that is decent. Um, like I say, if you can subscribe to the channel, support the channel, uh, like our videos, comment your thoughts, comment your thoughts on 
everything that we've discussed. Hopefully, I've done a, a decent match preview on my own and you've enjoyed it. Um, Ryan's back off holiday now as well, so he should be on the channel a little bit more as well. And um, Justin will be bringing the bucket app vibes because he's not taking it off now until we lose the game. So, uh, yes. So, Leicester, looking forward to it. I feel we can win this game. I'm going to go for a 2-1 Villa win. Drop your score predictions in the comment section down below. Hope you've enjoyed the content. Thank you all for voting for us in the content awards. And just subscribe up the villa.